Wow. I want to talk about very quickly nine things that God rewards. Nine things that God rewards. I wanted to break this down so that it's not, it's not hidden. Again, I want us to remember in the whole of this conversation, you're coming into this conversation knowing I am loved. I am loved. Amen. Somebody is feeling me on this stage. One of my deacons is feeling me. The rest, even if nobody else in church is feeling me, one of my deacons here is feeling me. Yeah. I am loved. Uh, I don't come in here trying to compete with anybody else. I love the fact that Jesus had those words. You are my son whom I love, in whom I am well pleased before he ever did a single work of ministry. He was approved of God before he did it. But guess what happens at that point? After that, he goes out and he sets his face like flint to do God's work. In other words, he's not doing it because he's waiting to be told well done. He's already been told, you're my son. And now he is serving out of that being told. And so I'm praying that for all of us as we serve God, none of us will serve God so that we can earn our salvation. We already have got it. We're going to be serving because of our salvation. Because of the gratitude, because of knowing how loved we are. The one who loves much is the one who serves much. Isn't it? Um, and so the nine things, I want to give you the nine things so that you can even begin to understand how to become a servant of the Most High God. What are the things that really matter? The interesting, when we talk about reward, the word used for reward, Jesus used two different words. Uh, for, 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 uh, and the Bible uses two different words for reward. There's a Greek word used in Luke 6, um, 23. Jesus says, rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. He said that in the book, in the parable of, uh, of uh, uh, the, 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 the Sermon on the Mount. And talk about when you're persecuted for righteousness, when people uh, call you all kinds of insults for my name's sake, those of you who are poor. He says, bless, bless, bless. Then he said, he said, rejoice in that day and live for joy because great is your reward in heaven. The word used there is mythos. <laughs> Somebody say mythos. <laughs> mythos, that's how it's spelt. And what that word means, it means wages. It means something that you earned. It is something that you worked. It's the other word for it is salary. It's a salary. Rejoice in that day and live for joy because great is your salary in heaven. What a shock. Jesus used the same word later when he spoke, um, when he said uh, in uh, Matthew 20, verse 8, he was talking about the laborers who are supposed to be paid. And he said, when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, their mythos beginning with the last ones hired going to the first. I think that was today's reading or, or a couple of days ago. Uh, and, and he's talking about the fact that they need to be paid. So these workers have earned and there's something that is now, when, by the way, when you earn your wages, it's not something that is a favor. You're not supposed to go to your boss and say, please pay me. That's wrong. Actually, you could sue your boss if they don't pay you because you worked for it. You earned it. The laborer deserves his wages. That's what uh, 1 Timothy 5.18 says. It says, don't muzzle the ox while it's treading out the grain because the worker deserves their misthos. They deserve their wages. And everybody who had Jesus knew exactly what he meant by that word. When you labor on earth, your employer gives you a misthos. When I, and what Jesus is saying is when you labor for your father, he has a misthos for you as well. It's not a charitable tip. It's not something extra where you say, here's something small for you. How do you translate that? Uh, <laughs> you know how people say, give us something small. It's, it's not something, huh? Yeah, kitty macho. Eh? It's not something small. It's not just something, no, 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 you're not, it is yours by right. This is what a wage is. Something you earn resulting from something you do. So that's the first word. The mythos. The second word used for reward in heaven appears in a story where Jesus was giving a story. He was, he was challenging a Pharisee. And the Pharisee had invited uh, people to his party and Jesus rebukes them. A very awkward moment. He's an, he's an honored guest. And in his speech he says, don't invite just these kinds of people. People who will pay you back. When you invite people who can't pay you back, something greater happens. And if you read the story, he says in Luke 14, verse 14, 
He says, although they cannot repay you. He said, invite the poor. Why? Because although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. And the word he uses there is not misthos. It is ap apodidomai. Somebody say apodidomai. <laughs> apodidomai. That's a different word. In other words, this word, it means that God himself will compensate you. This word means to compensate. To compensate. Uh, to reimburse. Maybe let me use corporate language. When you sign a reimbursement, when you go and you use a, 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 your, your, your car and you need to be reimbursed by your office because you used it for official duty, you go and apply and they give you a reimbursement, isn't it? So that's what a, they give you an apodidomai. That's what they give you. They, so you can actually change that form. Maybe in Mavuno you should be writing apodidomai form, the reimbursement form. You're repaid. And that's the word, if you read the story of the Good Samaritan, that's the word that Jesus uses in that. When this man has found a man who has been beaten up, and then he takes them to, the, he takes them to an innkeeper and says, look after this man. And in Luke 10, 35, it says, look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expenses you may have. I will apodidomai you for any money that you use on him. I will reimburse you for using your money and I will repay you for that. So the word apodidomai takes the reward of the idea of rewards into even more surprising territory for me. Because Jesus says when you receive his apodidomai, you're being reimbursed. It's as if you expensed for heaven and now you're claiming back your reimbursement. Isn't that, I mean, am I shocking somebody? I mean, both of these are really surprising. I mean, you're not, when, I, when you do a research on the word uh, reward, then you start looking, oh my goodness, that's not what I thought. I thought reward was a tip, like a, a little gift I'm given, something that somebody throws to me, like a poor person. Uh -uh. The two words, wages, reimbursement, misthos, apodidomai. And it's very interesting because when you go to Hebrews 11.6, this is a scripture I've quoted many times, uh, this, this last couple of days. It says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. There's that word again, reward. But this is the one time that he doesn't use misthos or apodidomai. The only time that it doesn't use that. The word that is used here is actually a compound word. Misthos apodidomai. The rewarder, when it says he's the rewarder, the God who rewards, it is misthos. You must believe that God comes, that God exists, and that he misthos apodidomize you, those who honestly seek him. God is the misthos apodidomai, the laborer, the, the, the boss who pays back your wages in return for what you did on his behalf, and he reimburses you. I mean, it's like, it's, it's like it puts both ideas together. It combines it. It's like one word is not enough. You must believe that he exists and he will pay you back your wages and reimburse you for everything you did on his behalf. What a shock. I think I, I need to, I'm just doing this to give you a little background so you understand as we get into rewards what we're talking about. Are you understanding? So now that you know Mythos, their wages, Apodidomai, there's reimbursement. By the way, these are very uncomfortable topics for Christians. Because Christians, we know we are saved by grace and we are all the same at the foot of the cross. But remember, I told you, some people have crowns and others don't have crowns. Even though they are still at that foot of the throne, you know. So I think it's important to understand, yeah, what are the things that causes God to want to repay you? <laughs> yeah. Remember, you're an ambassador. Ambassadors don't pay for their own way. They, whatever they spend, they are apodidomide by their government. Isn't it? Yeah, you go to New York and you've been sent by the government of Uganda. You don't live your own life. You take your kids to school, but the government of Uganda will apodidomide you. Because that is an expense. And at the end, because you've also represented them the whole month, they will misthos you as well. Are you understanding? And God is the one who not only misthoses, he also apodidomides. Uh, is somebody getting something now? 
I'm hoping that you can even just begin to see how this compound word applies. This is the kind of God we're talking. So now let's move into the nine things that God rewards. I, like, I, I want to just give you a bit of a background so you understand. God will reward you for scaling up the resources that he has given you for the sake of his kingdom. Scaling up. In other words, what we've just been talking about, God wants whatever he gave you for you to multiply it. He wants you to scale it up. He doesn't want you to return it as it was. God, you gave me a gift of singing. Here it is. I used to sing quietly in the shower. I've just returned it the way you gave me. Uh -uh. I gave you that gift so that you can bless people and nations. Yeah. God, here is a gift of prayer you gave me. I've returned. Uh -uh. I gave you that gift of prayer so you can take territory for the kingdom of God. Yeah. God, here is a gift of business. I'm so happy you gave me a gift of business. I had a successful business. Uh -uh. I gave you that gift of business so that people can be pulled out of poverty and brought into the kingdom of God. Yeah. God wants you to scale up whatever gift he has given you for the sake of his kingdom. And we talked about that. Well done, good and faithful servant. Matthew 25, 21. You've been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Uh, God wants us to scale up anything he's given us. All the gifts, all the resources, they are for him. Your marriage is a gift from God. Your car is a gift from God. Your house is a gift from God. Your position in society is a gift from God. Your birthplace is a gift from God. <laughs> Everything you have in your, city, in your life can be scaled up. Even the unfortunate things that happen to you are a gift from God. Look at Daniel, uh, uh, Joseph. Joseph was sold into slavery. And then he was put in prison. And then he said, the things that the enemy intended, God has worked out for good. He was able to take that pit and turn it into a palace. He was able to move into a place where God was able to use the things he learned as a slave and as a prisoner to govern a nation. Yeah, he didn't make excuses. Many people would make an excuse. I was trying to be faithful and then I was sold by my brothers. And they would allow offense to destroy their destiny. Uh-uh, not for Joseph. He was faithful with the little he was given. And he turned it into something big. Listen, if a slave and a prisoner can do what Joseph did, none of us in this room have an excuse. Yeah, none of us can say, oh, I'm from a poor family. Oh, I'm not educated. Oh, uh -uh, you're not a slave. And you're not a prisoner. Yeah, you have something in your hands and God wants you to scale it up. Everything you have is an opportunity for you to be a blessing to people and advance God's kingdom. Whenever you use the resources God has given you, even if it's spare time, and multiply it so that you can serve God with it. Uh uh. God will misthos you for that. God will reward you for that. God says, Enter now into my happiness. You've been faithful with small things. Now let me give you responsibility over big things. So, the question you need to be asking yourself is what do I have in my hands? As Christians, we must be doing assessments of ourselves. Do a gift assessment. What are the spiritual gifts God has given me? What are the talents? In Mizizi, we talk about the shape. We talk about your spiritual gifts. We talk about your heart, the passions that God gave me. That's a resource. We talk about the abilities. Some of you have natural abilities. You're good athletes. You're good at singing. You're good at maths. Yeah, I remember it was Pastor Kuria who taught us at Fearless Summit, uh, one Fearless Summit, that the best, of my, the best of my career, the best of my profession and my training should be used for the advancement of the local church. Should be used for the advancement of the church I attend. I mean, why should the corporate world be getting all my training and the benefits, and yet God's kingdom that he has placed me in is not receiving it? Yeah, those are abilities. P is for personality. Your persona all of us have different personalities. Every personality is a gift from God. Uh -uh, there is no inferior personality. Yeah, whether you're a phlegmatic, whether you're a choleric, whether you're melancholic, whether you're sanguine, happy, happy all the time, all those are gifts from God. Yeah, there's no inferior personality. Everything is God. God wants you to multiply it. And then the last one is your experiences. Experiences mean none of us was born in the same family. Some of you were born in wealthy families. Some of you were born in poor families. Some of you had a fantastic uh, childhood. Others of you had tragedies in your childhood. Every one of those is a resource. Every one is something you can multiply for the kingdom. And so the first thing that God rewards is scaling up your resources. Amen. Anybody ready to scale up some resources? Yeah. And you have assets you don't know. Some of you, your house is your asset. And maybe you've been saying, I'm too shy to host a discipleship group. Come on, that house is not yours. God will hold you accountable for scaling it up. You're missing opportunity for kingdom reward. 
You're praying for God to give you reward and yet you're sitting on that house. His house. And he's saying, I gave it to you. Multiply it ten times. Yeah. Imagine if your house gave birth to ten other discipleship groups in other houses. Ah, uh-uh, you're a hundred, you're already a thousand percent. Isn't it? Out of this house have come ten other houses now that are hosting discipleship groups. Isn't that, isn't that how you multiply? You just had one house, but now you have ten houses. Maybe you're a mom at home and you have one child. Maybe out of you being at home in your leave and all you're doing is looking after that child, you have the opportunity to disciple ten other children and their mothers who are in the estate. Uh uh-uh, just that my one child has given birth to ten other children in the kingdom of God. I am now multiplying the opportunities and the resources that God has given me. Am I helping your neighbor? (laughs) Number two, God will reward you for a surrendered life that prioritizes his agenda. I worked hard to make make them all to be S's, so that you can remember. So surrendered life, a surrendered life that prioritizes his agenda. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 to 27, Jesus says to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? And then listen to verse 27. For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and he will reward, he will miss those each person according to what they have done. Yeah? A surrendered life. He says, listen, don't take up your cross. If you want to be my disciple, don't try to save yourself. Surrender everything you have to me. Take up my cross and follow me. That's what he's saying. And he's saying that when you become, when you become that person, you're already earning rewards in heaven. Matthew 6.33 Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. All these things will be given to you as well. I'm so grateful for a man called Bruce Wilkinson, the first person who turned my, my mind on to God rewarding. Growing up as a Christian, I never knew that actually God has rewards. I thought... You know, once you're saved, you have all the rewards. And he's the one who, he has a book written, A Life God Rewards. And that's when I first read that as a younger Christian. I was like, wow. I mean, it was just mind-blowing for me. He's the one who wrote um, the Jabez Prayer. He's a famous, that's the same guy. And he wrote this book. And it was such a helpful book for me to see. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, all these other things. Whenever you put the kingdom of God first, all other things are added to you all other things and god i think uh, when we had a testimony the first day when someone called simon here dr simon decided i'm going to make sure my career is first about serving god anybody giving me a job had better understand that my ministry is first that's seeking first god's kingdom simon there are rewards already for that decision i can tell you that i'm not i don't have to be a prophet to tell you there's an eternal reward already simply on the basis of that decision and the things you've done since then this is how God works. When you prioritize God's agenda over your own agenda, when your prayer is not, let not my will be done, but yours, Father, God is able to use you in powerful ways to display his glory, and he will give you a reward. And by the way, it says all other things. So I don't think it's just talking about eternal rewards. It's also talking about rewards here on earth uh, during your life. Blessings so that you can become a blesser to God's work. Number three, God will reward you for sacrifices you made to serve him. So the first one, the second one was surrender, but this one is about sacrifice. Uh, there's something powerful that happens when you sacrifice. Matthew 19, 29 says, And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or fields, my goodness, there are so many things you can live for Jesus' sake. He's telling you there are some things here that you need to prioritize me over. And he's saying, if you prioritize me over your house, Prioritize me over your brothers or your sisters or your father or your mother or your wife or your children or your fields. He says, anyone who has done that will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. Was Jesus serious? A hundred times. What? That's what he's saying. When you make a sacrifice. By the way, there are people who make sacrifices in this church. Serious sacrifices. Um, there's, there's a lady who Pastor James was visiting recently. Uh, she's a member of this church. She was a member of this church when I started Mavuno Church in the South Sea Sports Club. She's always been in the prayer team of this church. When I left Mavuno Hill City as the pastor, Pastor Njoro came. She continued in the prayer ministry. When Pastor Njoro left and handed Pastor James, she continued in the prayer ministry. She lives in the other side of town, 
an area called Pangani. And she doesn't have a car. She comes by bus and she's here early in the morning. As people in Yeah. She's here early in the morning. Let me just say she's here early in the morning. At eight, at eight, the service here starts at nine. She's here at eight and she comes for one of the services. The second services, she gets outside and she just intercedes. And I always knew, by the way, even when I was in Bellevue, there's somebody, if nobody else is interceding, there's one person who's interceding for me. Uh-uh. That is sacrifice. Sacrifice. She? But she's missed twice since Be- like since she joined Ma- not Bellevue since the club she's missed church two Sundays one was to bury her brother and to bury her father the only two Sundays she's ever missed church this is not somebody with a nice cruiser that can come here and never you know comes by Matatu by the way to leave Pangani and to be here by 8 what time do you have to leave on a Sunday morning and she's not somebody idle. She had a job this whole time. I mean, she works, so she's busy. But she just, suck. she just said, this is my calling to pray for the pastor of this church. In fact, her conviction is God is going to bring a revival through Mavuno and I'm, God called me to be here and pray it into being. And she's been doing it for 18 years. Uh-uh. What? You know, by the way, there are some times when people ask you, hey, Pastor M, what are the things you guys are doing in Mavuno to do the thing? And sometimes, you know, when God humbles you, you realize God could, it might have nothing to do with the worship team, nothing to do with the preaching, nothing. There could just be one or two saints in your campus who God has called and who sacrifice greatly for the kingdom. And that is why your campus is prospering right now. That is why your ministry is prospering right now. A very hidden person who's just sacrificing. God rewards sacrifice for the kingdom. God rewards sacrifice. John 12, 26 says, Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honor the one who serves me. Ah, 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 ah. You're serving, you're not serving your pastor, you're serving him. And what does Jesus say? My father will honor. Honor. I told you about a vision that I watched. Uh, there's a time I was watching this prophet who was talking about how they had a vision. They went to heaven and they saw the pastors in the first, near the gate. Very prominent pastors they knew with very big ministries. But I think one of the things that heaven will surprise us is who will be the ones receiving honor. It may not be who you think. It may not be the loudest person in your discipleship group, by the way. Yeah. It might be a very quiet, very reserved person who just sacrificed for the Lord. Uh -uh, They were not there to impress anybody. They were there just to give to the Lord without counting. How many of you have sacrificed your business growth to be here for the gathering? Praise God for you. Yeah. Yeah. There are some of you who even had to pray because you're like, Lord, how will things happen? And I'm away. But you decided, I'm going to seek first the kingdom of God. I'm going to trust him. My goodness, there is reward for sacrificing. Some of you, by the way, you've sacrificed annual leave. Yeah. You're, you're, you're not here because you, you're here because you took leave. And that leave, you're already planning your leave for Fearless Summit as well. Already your leave is already half gone just on church things but you're not doing it for a human being you're doing it for your father in heaven because you've sensed he's called you to give towards his work and to be there to learn to grow Uh -uh. there's nothing you'll ever sacrifice for God that he's not rewarding you for that I can tell you for free God is a rewarder he rewards many of you have sacrificed greatly to serve God's people as DG leaders as ministry associates The Bible says God will give you a hundred times as much and give you eternal life and also honor you. Uh -uh. (laughs) You better claim your reward, by the way. Yeah. When you're there and you're thinking, my car is not even working, but I have to start it and get to church. When you're thinking, I even have a headache, but my house is the church and people are coming. Uh, Pastor CJ. (laughs) Yeah. Whenever you think like that, say, God, I am doing it, but I thank you because I have a reward. Great is my reward in heaven even as I'm serving you. It's not a, don't be ashamed. The Lord has said it himself. You can just remind him of what he said because it's true. There's a reward for you. And you can give sacrificially knowing that God will never owe you. Uh -uh. He will always reward. He will always reimburse. Yeah. When you're giving to the poor at your inconvenience, 
Just understand, the Bible says the one who gives the poor lends to the Lord. Yeah. I sacrificed. I could have even maybe eaten better food, but I've decided to support a, a children's home. Trust me. Trust me. There is a reward for you. One day you'll just be going with your kaform written apodidomai to the angel. <laughs> I'm here to request. I'm here to receive my re- reimbursement. Huh? And the angels will be like, wow. Huh? Yeah. And you get your reimbursement. There's reward. This is what the scripture teaches. There is reward for the sacrifices you make. Number four, God will reward you for suffering for his name and reputation. Suffering for his name and reputation. Luke chapter 6 verse 22 to 23 says, Blessed are you when people hate you and they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven for that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. Ah, whenever people ridicule you for being a Christian, whenever you're, you're, you're actually persecuted, whenever you're not promoted in your workplace because you're too much of a Jesus person and they don't need people like you, whenever you don't get a tender in your business because they, don't want, they want somebody who can give a kickback to get the tender, whenever you refuse to, get a, to pay a bribe and, 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 and you end up going into the police station, <laughs> And you spend the night. (laughs) Pastor CJ. It's good to have friends who know the Lord. You and your wife. Refuse to pay a bribe to the police. And then you both spend the night. There are are saints in this house, by the way. I'm talking about Pastor CJ and Rogoro. Let's appreciate this couple, by the way. They they refuse to pay a bribe to a, a traffic policeman. And it was Friday. You know how they, they pull you in? And these people actually went, and Pastor CJ has a horror story of sleeping in a crowded cell of drunks. And then they put him in one, and then he, they put his wife in another cell. And they slept that whole night just because they said, we don't bribe. You do your worst. Uh-uh. You sacrifice. Let them persecute you because of his name. Great is your reward. By the way, you've even forgotten that instance until I reminded you just now. Yeah. But I'm telling you, when that cloud is being, the archives are being pulled out of the cloud, you will see that incident there. I I promise it will be there. And you will have said, oh my God, we've been laboring in vain. We didn't, what have we? And the Lord will just give you crowns and jewels and say, you stood for my name. You stood firm and you didn't have to. By the way, most people would have said, if I was alone, God would understand. I mean, if I was alone, I'd have done it. I'd have been faithful. But I'm with my wife. When you, when you guys told me the story, I actually thought, I'm with Pastor Carol. But they said, let it burn. It's okay. We'll go in. And they did. And I'm sure the host, you probably at the whole time were expecting the, as you're in, uh, the cell, for the cell to flow wide open. And for you guys to walk out, Paul and Silas, as everybody's asleep, like Peter. It didn't happen. And the next morning found them. In fact, Pastor CJ gives a story of how fast he stood up because it's like the floor is dirty. People, are, He stood up and then he was like, hey, it's tiring to stand up. So he kind of squatted on the cells like this, leaning on the bars. Then at some point he was like, hey, even this can't work. So he sat down. The next thing he knew, he was just sleeping like everybody else on the <laughs> Great is your reward. Yeah. yeah. Some of you, by the way, this is not a laughing matter. You're suffering right now because of his name. There are difficult things you have gone through because you won't compromise. Some of you have failed exams because you failed, you refuse to sleep with a lecturer. Some of you have failed to be promoted and you've been stuck in the place you're in because you failed to compromise. But great is your reward. Great is your reward. Great is your reward. Some of you have been ridiculed by family members for being Christians. People have even taken bets on how long you're going to stay. (laughs) Great is your reward. Number five, God will reward you for serving those in need. Serving those in need. Matthew 6, 3 to 4. Matthew Matthew 6, 3 to 4. When you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. In other words, don't CSR. Don't make noise about it. People don't need to know. I know people do it because of reputation. For you, reputation is a reward here on earth. So when you give, give it 
in secret. That's what Jesus says. He says, although they, uh, he says, then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Are you seeing all these verses have to do with rewards? Yeah. When you bless the poor and you do it not to gain recognition, not to gain anything for yourself, but simply to be a blessing to them, God says, he will reward you. There will be a reward. I wish Christians, more Christians took this verse seriously. You know, we have mosques where people come on Friday because they know they are going to be given alms. And many of those people believe the alms are what are going to make their way to heaven for them. We already understand our destination is secure. And that, maybe that's why Christians are stingy because it's like, I'm going to heaven whether I give you or not. <laughs> Even if I'm not kind to the poor, I'll, see, I'll still be in heaven. But remember guys, our eternal destination was already secure. Now we are talking about our compensation. And God says, I will reward you when you bless the poor. Luke 14, 13, it says, when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. God will apodidomai you. He will say, uh -uh, you spend resources on my work. Come on, let me show you how I can repay you back those resources. Well done, good and faithful servant. Number six. God will reward you for seeking him through spiritual disciplines such as fasting and praying. Come on, Mavonites. Yeah, he will reward. There's actually a reward for seeking God. Yeah, some of these things, you know, we're, we're shy as we do them. It's like, I, all I want is God. Yes, 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 but you're seeking him. And he will reward you for it. And it's not wrong to know that there's a reward. You know, sometimes people think you're, you're, you're spoiling it now when you know there's a reward. No, no, no. Do it for the reward. Do it for the reward. A wise husband brings flowers home. Sends a text in the day. Says, honey, I'm missing you. Yeah. He's not being manipulative. He just knows there's a reward. <laughs> yeah. He's a wise husband. Any wise husbands in the house? Yeah, they're here. They're here. They know. Apodidomai. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. I'm so sorry. All right, all right, all right. Let's move on. I'm, I'm getting distracted here. Matthew 6, 6. When you pray, go into your room, close the door, pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Ah, 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 ah. When you're praying at 4.30, God sees. Yeah. When you make a commitment, I'm going to seek the Lord every day and pray. God sees. And the Bible says, the Lord who sees what is done in secret will actually reward you for it. All you, th you thought you were just talking to God. You thought it's just Christians talk to God. They pray. That's what prayer is about. But you need to understand, God will actually reward you for prayer. Am I, am I making this up? It's in the scripture. It actually says it. I'm just reading what the Bible says. Matthew 6, 17 to 18. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face. So it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting. <laughs> yeah? We shouldn't tell. I mean, you shouldn't be looking like you're so oppressed. Like, look happy. Put on perfume. Like, like show up like you know what you're doing. Yeah, show up. And it says... It shouldn't be obvious to others you're fasting, but only to your father who is unseen. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. The same, same thing. He will reward you. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. I love this scripture. It says, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you don't know. Calling on God has rewards. Hidden treasures that come. Treasures of wisdom, but also eternal treasures. And so God will bless us. Prayer and fasting are good for us. By the way, prayer and fasting heals you. Without even spiritual, it heals your physical body. Yeah. There's some of us who are healed just by prayer and fasting. Pastor, where is Pastor Victor? Pastor Victor didn't even... He, he, this man, he's looking so good, by the way. But this man, as he was fasting, he's always feared fasting a liquid fast because, he, because of diabetes. And he always knew my sugars will just... I can't handle. But this year he told God, by faith, I'm going to take this fast. And the whole fast, he did a liquid fast. Never had an issue with the sugars. In fact, right now we believe he's healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. 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 Imagine, he just decided, I'm going to seek the Lord. And the Lord says, first of all, before even the Lord has rewarded him, his body is already healed. But then in addition to that, there is an eternal reward that is coming to him because of his fasting. And because of his seeking the Lord. Isn't that amazing, Pastor Vic? By the way, I'm so proud of you. 
Well done. Well done, Pastor Victor. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The Bible says God rewards you every time you pray, every time you fast, and he will give you hidden treasures you could never have discovered for yourself. Number seven. I'm trying to move quickly uh, so that I can... Because uh, there were nine. So there are just three more to go. God will reward you for submitting to your employer as a faithful steward. What? <laughs> yeah, it's just number seven will shock you. Huh? It's not spiritual. It doesn't sound spiritual, this one. <laughs> Colossians chapter 3, verse 22 to 24. Colossians 3, 22 to 24. Servants, do what you're told by your earthly masters. And don't just do the minimum that will get you by. Do your best. Work from the heart for your real master. Capital M. For God, confident that you'll get paid in full when you come into your, full in, in, into your inheritance. Can you see that? You'll get paid. This, this translation actually got that. Yeah, you will get paid in full. The silent servant who does shoddy work will be held responsible. Being a follower of Jesus doesn't cover up bad work. <laughs> yeah? Christians, sometimes we're known for shoddy work. Oh, I was praying. They should understand. I was praying for the company. That's why I never got my deadlines met. Yeah? That's mediocrity. There is actually a blessing for being excellent. Daniel was excellent at his work. And he was excellent in his prayer. He was excellent in the things of the spirit, but he was also excellent in the things of state and matters of state. And because of that, those two, those two things are an unbeatable combination, by the way. When you are a serious prayer warrior who is on God's agenda and you know why you're there and you're not there to impress anybody because you're loved fully, and then you know you're excellent at what you do, those two things will make you unfireable. Daniel was unfireable, by the way. There were four changes of government. And those days it was not by elections, it was by murder. They kill everybody. All the officials would be killed and the new country would take over. And that's what happened each of those four times. And guess what? Every time Daniel was not only replaced, he was promoted. They would look at the records and say, ah, there's one department here. Where is that guy? Find him in that prison. Bring him. And the man would be made even higher than where he had been before. Prayer excellence. And the Bible says, the, your Father in heaven will reward you for your excellence. Don't be shoddy. Mavuno people, may you be known for excellence. Yeah. It's a tragedy that people trust. People, sometimes people say, I trust that guy because he's a Muslim. Ah, what are you saying? What are you talking about? May they say one day, I trust that guy because he goes to Mavuno church. Yeah. Yeah. When this man says, I will do it by this day, it is done by that day. When this person says, I will take this money and I will do this for you, it is done exactly the same way. When they say, I'm making you a product, it is given exactly as the picture showed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what was ordered and what was delivered are two different things. Surely, that, that is not a Mavuno person. Let it never be. Not at all. Let, 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 let us never hear reports as your pastors. You're that guy who always borrows money and never returns. That is actually calling a curse on yourself. You're stealing your own, earth, your own eternal rewards. Be a person of excellence. Serve well. Submit to your employer. If you're a business person, your employer is your customer. You need to understand that. The person who gives you money so you give them a product or a service, that is your employer. And give them excellence without excuses. Amen. That could be a whole sermon series. Number eight. God will reward you for showing honor to those in authority over you. Showing honor. Mark chapter 9 verse 41. Truly I tell you, anyone who gives a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose their reward. He was talking to the disciples. And he was saying, as I send you, and as you go from village to village, and as you're speaking, and somebody says, this one is a servant of the Most High, and gives you a cup of water, he says, already that person is rewarded. Because they blessed you as a servant of God, they will have a reward in heaven. Even if it was a cup of water, there's a reward they will receive. By the way, you, when, you live in, when you live up country and you're a pastor and you enter someone's house, they cannot let you leave without drinking something, eating something. 
Because they want their reward. Yeah. They want. We're not, it's not like town. Eh? Pasi, oh, hey, sasa pasi. Okay, you're here. <laughs> We've just, we're a generation that has not been taught honor. And we don't understand how to treat God's servants. But the Bible says that God will reward us from show, for showing honor to those he's put in authority over us. And it's not just in the church. Ephesians 6 verse 2 to 3. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and you may enjoy long life on earth. Yeah. Honor your parents. It does, you don't honor them because they are worthy of honor. You honor them because God wants you to honor them. Yeah. You honor them because you are a person of honor. And the Bible says whenever you honor your parents, ha, there is a reward. It will go well with you. God himself has said, it will go well with me. Yeah. But, and, and you know, the thing about doing, when you understand promises of scripture, you're able to pray them. Me, when I give my gift of honor, I always say, I always explain. I always, I always know why I'm giving that gift. And I'll always tell the person I'm honoring, if it's my parents, if it is my spiritual authority, I'll say, this is my gift. I'm claiming the blessing of honor that it will go well with me. God has told me to go well and I will live long in the land the Lord has given me. Yeah. That's what the scripture has said. You know, some people just send you an m and then they don't even tell you who they are. Come on, claim your promise. Yeah. By the way, any gift I give, I always claim my promise. Even when I tithe, I tithe with a prayer. I say, Lord, I've given you my tithe that the devourer will not come near my things and that the floodgates of heaven are opening over my project. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Understand, understand that there's a purpose for that tithe. Don't give it blindly. Don't just give it like you've given pay, deduction, pay as you earn from your salary slip. No, there's a reason. Yeah, it's not, it's not housing project. What is this thing called? National housing. No, that's not what it is. It's not a tax. There's a promise when you show honor. Matthew 10, 41. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. God gives fathers treasures for the sake of children's inheritance. And your father is, your father, your mother are actually treasure troves that are just waiting for you to unlock. Yeah, through your honor. There's just gifts that they have for you. Don't let their humanity stop you from receiving God's gifts. Yeah. Don't let the humanity of men keep you from accessing the divine gifts in them. There I'm quoting directly Pastor Kevin Kilonzi. Yeah, don't, don't let the... You look at your pastor and say he's too young. Ah, did, you hear, did you hear a young man from Kitale saying, my pastor, who, is, who should actually be my children, but he's my child, but now he's my spiritual authority. Yeah, there's something that honor. When you understand honor, it's a powerful thing. It has nothing to do with the age of the person or the education of the person. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the fact that God has appointed them in authority to release blessing over you. And you know, if you, as you bless them, if they lead well, guess what happens? It goes well for you. That's the way it is. This also, by the way, applies to national leaders. We need to honor our leaders. Yeah. L let it not be said of us that we are dishonorable people. And many, many of us come from nations that are dishonoring towards national leaders. Shame on us. Yeah, it's a shame. I think we call down curses on our nation every time we dishonor our president. And I am not in his party, by the way. He has not paid me to say this. I don't, I'm not, I'm not saying, this is not a political statement, it's a spiritual statement. And even if the opposition party was in power, I would say exactly the same thing. Yeah. Far be it from me to ever dishonor my national leader. By speaking ill of them, by criticizing, there's something called engagement, political engagement or civic engagement that has nothing to do with the leader. If the leader is doing wrong, there are ways to civically engage without insulting them, trolling them, calling them insults. Because every time you call your leader insults, you're insulting yourself. You're insulting your nation. And words have power. Yeah. Some of us, we curse our nation every time we speak because we've never understood. My goodness, we're cut, we cutting ourselves down. We're cutting down. When, in, when we were children, there used to be a book some of you, of course, wouldn't have been alive then. But the old ones in the house remember a book where there was a guy who was sitting on a trunk of a tree and cutting the tree branch. 
I can see the people who are Abu, Allah, how do you know Abu Nuasi you? Pastor Kilo, you're too young to know such things. I was looking around to see my generation of the people in the room who know Abu Nuasi. You're sitting on the branch and you're cutting the branch as you're sitting on it. When the thing falls, you'll also fall. Yeah. But on the opposite side, God rewards you for showing honor for those in authority. And then lastly, the last point, God will reward you for sharing your resources to father his kingdom. Yeah, sharing your resources to father his kingdom. Luke 6, 38, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Yeah. Eternal rewards. Eternal rewards. You know, the Bible also talks about not storing treasure in, on earth. You might have a lot of money in your bank account, but you're going to die and leave the money in your bank account. Why not invest it into eternal things where moth and rust do not steal and thieves do not break in and destroy? This is what Jesus asked people. When I talked about the pyramids, some of those pyramids were amazing. I had the privilege of walking into one display by a, a, a king who was called King Tutankhamun. And they had a, I'm telling you, the wealth that was found in his pyramid, they find it in the gold, it's there. They actually have it all in the Museum of Cairo. And it's incredible wealth. Like they buried wealth with him. This man was, he was a supreme ruler. And they wanted to make sure that in the afterlife, he would be rich as well. And so they buried him with, like his coffin was made, there were three coffins, one inside the other. And all of them were made of solid gold. And they are there, you just see them open. And then you just see gold treasures. I mean, that thing is massive treasures. But you know what? Tutankhamun went into eternity. All that gold was discovered thousands of years later where it was buried in the ground. How foolish. Yeah. I mean, you, take your, you want to take your Ferrari into the grave with you. How will it help you? You'll just leave it there. It'll just rot underneath. Yeah. You're just burying it. You can't take it with you. But when you give, there's eternal reward. When you give to God's work, you are actually investing your money where it counts. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6 to 7, my last verse. says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your hearts to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Now, I like that one because it's not, it's not talking about eternal things. That one is talking about here, here, here. That's an African thing. Here, here. Now, now. Hapa, hapa. That's what it's talking about. I, don't, I think in most African language, when you repeat the word, you're, you're emphasizing. Now, now. That's what it's talking about. Because in heaven, you will not need anything. But here it says, having all that you need. So God is able to make all things abound. All good things abound to you. So that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound. In other words, if you're using your resource for good work, God will give you resource to do more good work. If you're faithful with little, God will give you more to do even more. That's the way the kingdom works. That's kingdom stewardship. Now, I love that because I've seen it to be true in my life. That the more I've given, God is not a God who is old. He's not a God who is old. When I tell you, let's give tithe. Uh -uh, I'm the first tither in this house. And I don't tithe 10%. When I was a young Christian, I said, God, I look forward to the day when I'll be able to tithe 90% and live on 10%. Yeah, so I don't tithe 10%. I tithe, I suspect, as much as anybody in this house, which probably means more than everybody in this house. Um, I don't do it. I'm not saying that to boast. I'm saying that as a father. Because as a father, if you don't know, how will you follow, isn't it? When I give fast fruits, I don't give fast fruits of what I earn in January. I make a, for me, I make a number in my mind and I give it. And every time I've given it by faith. And God has always multiplied it. Last year, what God gave me was 35 times what I gave for my fast fruits. In one, 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 one opportunity, God gave me 35 times what I'd given. And this year, for the very first time as a result, this year is the first time when that number I had, it was in sitting in the bank. The money I just, I actually gave it all at once. Usually I save by faith and then I start 
you know, waiting for to see what January has. This time I already knew what I had, the gift for January. And I bless God because I'm growing from glory to glory. I'm giving more every year because God is faithful. When I tell you fast fruit, some of you are afraid. I'm not afraid. And the reason is because I've tested and tried and seen that there are rewards. I'm not even talking about eternal rewards. I'm talking about rewards. Hapa, hapa. There are rewards to your giving. Now, I've just instructed you on how to gain. That's the marking scheme. <laughs> That's like day one of class. And the lecturer has told you, now here are the things. Go and do these things this term. And you have an A. Isn't that amazing? Like God has already just consolidated. What I've just done is consolidate for you what God's word says about results, uh, re rewards. And he said, here are the things that will get you rewards as you serve God. I believe that God has said this year is a year for hidden treasures. I want you to see this not as a sermon, but as a spiritual investment forum. I've just given you spiritual investment advice. And I've taught you how to make wealth in a year of drought. I've taught you how to succeed when everybody else is struggling around you. I've taught you how to ha have rewards here and in eternity. And I've equipped you to invest in spiritual treasure and to access hidden treasures. I want to say that this year, there are actually going to be multiple testimonies in this church. Yeah, multiple. Already, by the way, there are testimonies, but they are nothing compared to the testimonies that are coming to this church. Some of you right now, you have no clue about the testimony, the things that God already has for you. And God will reward. And the testimonies will be astounding, for sure. But I want you never to forget that the real place of treasure, this, these things are small. Those testimonies will be rejoicing at the end of the year. It's that ball. They're just happening in that small space. Because they're going to be here, by the way, and they're exciting. But don't forget that great is your reward for eternity. Your reward is for not, it's not just for now. The things you're investing in in the kingdom are not just for now. There's far greater that God has for you as you serve him. Never let anyone tell you you're being too fanatical for God's kingdom. Uh-uh. You understand what you are doing. When we talk about money, I always tell people, live like no one else today so that you can live like no one else tomorrow. That's something I've told you about finances. Well, I want to tell it to you about serving God. Serve like no one else today so that you can live like no one else tomorrow. And one day when you're in heaven, you'll be there with your whole DG. Come on, don't leave anyone behind. If your DG members are here, you'll all be there casting the crowns that you have, putting down all those great things before the king, all the awards he's given you. You will be so such a ruler over nations. You will have responsibility and authority over peoples because this is God's plan and intention for you. For some of you, this sounds very theoretical right now, but I'm telling you, this is the most real thing you'll ever hear, that God exists and that he rewards. This is the God we serve. Come on, stand up to your feet. I want to bless you as we go out into our lunch. Father, thank you for the fact that you're a God who exists. Thank you that you're a God who rewards. Thank you that you're a loving Father. Yeah, your loving Father. I just thank you first of all for the, for the ground zero of salvation. And for everybody in this house who knows you as their Lord and Savior. That already we have the reward of, our, we know what our destination is going to be. All of us. And by the way, if you've given your, name, your, your life to Jesus, I want to, I want to speak to you with assurance right now. You are heaven bound. You are. You are. You're a ruler. God has already created you to be one of his subjects in the kingdom of God. Let nobody ever make you doubt your salvation. There's nothing you can do to make God love you less. Just like there's nothing you can do to make God love you more. Just serve him. Stay in him. So that's the first thing I'll say. But I also want to give thanks to God that he's so gracious. He gives us an opportunity to grow in stewardship and responsibility. He's giving us an opportunity to serve him more. What a good father. He's not just telling us, sit there. He's telling you, come, come, come and serve me. Come and work for me. Let me grow you. Where is my son? I think he's moved. He's, he's running around doing something. It's okay. He's here. Is he here? Wanjao. So this son of mine, he's serving me as my ama bearer. Yeah. He's serving me as my ama bearer. I love this man greatly with all my heart. Yeah. He's the son of my house. The son of my youth. I love him with all my heart. 
and he knows that you know that <laughs> and I'm giving him the privilege of serving me as my bearer because I know as he serves me he will have access. he will have access to people he would never talk to he will have access to wisdom he would never have he will see how I respond to people he will learn things from being close to me so because I love him I've called him to serve me yeah and that's what God is doing with us God is such a loving God he's not just saying now you're my son sit there let me run the world he's saying son come and learn from me how to rule come and learn from me how to be a leader because by the way this man is going to be a great leader he will and he knows it so you know that <laughs> he really does it's been prophesied over him since he was a child he's going to be a great leader but somebody has to train him and what's the job of a father but to train him so when we come here in the morning he's the one who drives me because I want him to be a good driver yeah not just to learn from watching matatu drivers or going to driving school so he drives me and now he drives my whole family back and forth and then he waits on me the whole day but it's not to punish him it's because I want him to be an even greater leader than he is right now and by the way I believe this is the privilege the father has called us I want you to understand this reward thing it's not to put pressure on us it's because God wants you to grow in your responsibility because he loves you and he wants you to be a ruler and to reign with him here's another young Amabera come up also Michael yeah 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 this one here is here to he's here serving his parents the Onens along with his brothers and they're waiting on me together and guess what they're both going to be greater than me yeah these ones will be greater than me yeah because you can't serve and end up being where they cannot do what I'm doing they'll do even greater things because at my age I was not sitting in conversations like they're sitting in and that's what the father is ushering you into saying come and serve me come and give to me come and give to my purposes and my kingdom that will bring you closer to me you'll understand how to be a steward of my resources because I see you ruling cities I see you ruling kingdoms on my behalf this is what the father is calling us into and so I, would, I just want to speak a blessing over you. Manja, would you like to pray for people? Um, all right, um, let's pray. Um, oh God, thank you for a wonderful day today. Thank you that you all bless enjoy a wonderful morning and a wonderful session throughout the afternoon. And as we go for lunch, bless the lunch as we take it. Um, for us who have been given gifts um, who we have not yet discovered help us discover them and to also use them to you know reach out with other people around the world across the world bless us and be with us uh, help us to be responsible with the gifts you give us and protect us in Jesus name I pray amen, amen.